Tim. It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You saw up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the morning star drive, you know. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Monday, February 14th. And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So what is happening on this Valentine's Monday? We're going to get some coronavirus updates, current news from around the world, the Sunday message review, and of course, 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan from San Francisco. All right, everyone, how was your weekend? And yes, it is a special day. It is Valentine's Day today, so it's kind of crazy. But you know, on top of that, something even bigger than Valentine's Day, because, you know, a lot of us uh, who aren't, like, blessed and stuff like that or JS, we don't really have, like, Valentine's Day like the world does. But uh, something bigger than that. Today, guys, is the 500th episode for the Morning Star Drive. Tell me... The crowds are cheering. We've made it. We've made it to 500 episodes, and I am super ecstatic and happy because it falls on Valentine's Day. So the day that to you spend with your lover, uh, this is a day that you celebrate, and more than anything else, I am super happy and thankful that we are celebrating the 500th episode together, which means uh, on this Monday, I do want to do something special. Well, I don't know what I, you know, I, I don't know if I can do it from the program, but I definitely got to go out to dinner or something like that where I can say, yes, we made it to 500, give myself a high five and pat on the back. But uh, more than anything else, I, I am just grateful and thankful, number one, to the Holy Trinity. Uh, just give me the fire to get to 500 episodes. You know, I never even thought it would reach 500. Like, I've reached 500 episodes. Um, when it comes to, how about, do you guys remember the Sunday edition? Sunday edition's already at like 97. So I'm almost uh, three more weeks, I'll be at 100 episodes of uh, the Morning Star Drive Sunday edition interview. So that's kind of crazy, too, that I'm three weeks away from uh, the Sunday edition, which also means. That's going to be uh, heading pretty close to uh, March 16th also, wouldn't it? Right? That's true, right? So the closest one, when I hit 100, is going to be uh, on March 12th. Yeah, so that's kind of like the week of March 16th. So that's kind of crazy and, and exciting for me too. But uh, grateful, thankful for all you guys just doing an amazing thing. Uh, I, I think we've, we've just kind of gotten through it together. And I'm going to tell you why you guys are important to this, uh, even for me to continue to do this. It's because... Like these podcasts were made for members. And if members don't listen, like say like like no one was listening, then I would never be able to push myself to continue to do this, right? But we see that the you know the channel is growing. Growing meaning we're getting more viewership. Growing meaning we have more people participating. Growing, you know, there's so many other different ways we can look at this growth that we have in this channel. Of course, there's a limited number of uh, people that speak English in, in uh, Providence. So this podcast is not going to hit, you know, it can't really hit in like the thousands upon thousands thousands because it's for English speaking people more than anything else so uh if not you know if, if anything for me I'm just like wow I'm just grateful and I'm just really really thankful that I'm able to do this so a uh, big shout out to all you guys who've been listening new and old though I think some of you hey you know put in the comments how many of you guys have been here since the beginning like since episode one, when I was using a desktop computer with like a pin mic connected to the back of the computer and doing everything in one shot. Like there's no editing. It's basically going through the whole thing. It took me like six hours to make each episode. It was pretty crazy. But yeah, put a shout out in the comments. Have If you guys have actually... Uh if you guys have been here since the beginning. Now, it doesn't mean you listen to every single episode, but, you know, you've been pretty regular or consistent. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I would love to he see those people who, who are the ones who have been here since episode number one because that's pretty crazy. I think I have, like, one or two people in mind that I think because I see them in the comments all, all the time. But it's really exciting. So super grateful, thankful to God, all you guys. And uh, I'm really hoping to uh, hit another 500 because 1,000 would be a really, really big mark for me also. Right. So once again, guys, uh, thank you. Uh, and how was your weekend? How was your weekend? Uh, we're we're in the you know we had a great weekend, great message, and this week's going to be Resurrection Day on Friday, I believe. Right, the eighteenth, because it's fourteenth, four days later. Yeah, it was, it's going to be on Friday. So that's kind of cool. We have Resurrection Day. I hope all of us can really resurrect this time also. Um, 
Uh, it's Monday, and I'm super. Ha- this is a really happy Monday for me because Valentine's Day and the 500th episode episode fitting in the same, you know, uh, on the same uh, the same day. And on top of it, you know, the message this week is perfect. You know, realize the grace of the Trinity who saved you from death and live loving them. And uh, a lot of things to think about and what I want to do for my thoughts of the week tomorrow. Usually doing a ministry, but tomorrow I think I'm going to talk about some of the stuff where I almost died. I think that's something that uh, a lot of us should be doing anyways. Hey, you know what? For my Thursday podcast, any of you guys are out there have a crazy story, would love to hear how uh, God saved you from death. You know, if you guys have anything like that, I would love to hear it if, if you could uh, if you could share in that one also. So that's kind of cool. All right. So uh, what? Oh, make, make sure everyone this like and comment. Uh, and whether you're on SoundCloud or YouTube, uh, the comments are building really fast, guys. Like especially on SoundCloud, surprisingly, there's a lot of people that are going over there and actually commenting now. So I'm really, really enjoying time over there. It's a little bit difficult compared to uh, YouTube to answer comments, but it's still it's still not hard. Uh, I mean, to, to, to reply to the comments, but YouTube is definitely the easiest. So if you guys have anything you want to comment, say, go ahead, pop it down below. All right. So, wow, 500 episodes. I'm still really shocked by this. You know, oh, you know, Valentine's Day is very kind of interesting. Right. So uh, we had a conversation with, uh, I had some conversation with some members from different countries. And um, uh, I was talking to some people from Japan and they said that on on Valentine's Day, it's considered the day that girls give chocolate to guys. Yeah, that's that interesting. And then one month later, on March 14th, then it's time for the guys to give expensive gifts to the girls. So, like, they were saying that, you know, the guys would give chocolates to the girls on, on uh, Valentine's Day, but their expectation of a bigger gift is big on March 14th. Personally, I am so happy I am not in that situation because even Korea, Korea has some ridiculous stuff. Like, they just make up stuff. I'm serious. They make up stuff to be super sentimental. You, I don't know if you guys have this on the countries. They have, like, you know, that is White Day. They have White Day in Korea, too. They have Pepero Day, which is November 11th. And then, like, if you're dating and stuff, like, you have a 100-day celebration, 200-day celebration, 300-day celebration, one-year celebration. It's crazy. I I don't think it's worth it. (laughs) I'll tell you straight up, I don't think it's worth it uh, to have a relationship in uh, in Korea. It's just too much. Way too much. You guys got to come to America and Canada. It's just this one shot. One shot of like Valentine's Day. You go out and have a date together. Whether you're married, uh, you know, couples out there, they're going to all have their dates and stuff like that. So, you know, you guys have any, uh, what do you guys do for your Valentine's Day? Write that in the comments below. You know, in, for like the Philippines, what do you guys do in the Philippines for... Um, for Valentine's Day, Malaysia, Singapore, all over Europe, like Canada, America is super easy. It's just go on a date. You buy chocolates and you buy flowers, whatever it is, and you go on a date together kind of thing, right? And that's kind of like a pretty, it's simplified. There's no, you know, girls do this day and then guys are on white day and then you have to celebrate the hundredth and this and yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'm not, I honestly, I'm not super happy about that. If I, I'm so happy that uh, I didn't have to go through that in Korea. Yeah. Either way. So, uh, yeah, write down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your your uh, Valentine's Day is like. Uh, this week or last week, Espresso was gone Thursday. Um, we, you know, of course, we had that video on uh, the big mistake by Abraham, right? And, of course, his mistake was huge that it caused 400 years of, uh, of slavery to uh, his descendants. So uh, that is a good one for you and your newcomers to take a look at also, right? And, uh, you know, we are, you know, we're going to try newer, newer things each and every time. So keep supporting us. Uh, put in your likes, your comments for that Espresso with Sky. And even more so, we would love your prayers. Your prayers is the number one thing that we need more than anything else. And also, just a reminder, we do have our MSD clothing store and the link is in the description below. Get your Pravi clothing with Sunstein's Proverbs, Pravi Life, all these are the different things. Show your pride uh, through what we wear, okay? And I, you know, we're, we're thinking of constantly thinking of newer and newer things to uh, make for this clothes. And I, I have some cool ideas too. Either way, uh, this week, uh, Sunday edition, yesterday, we had uh, Blessed Family Aaron Behick from Hawaii who's currently living in LA. Really inspiring interview. See, you know, and you get to see his amazing kids. So adorable and beautiful kids, two girls and a guy. And I was, I had the privilege to play with his kids like the last week I was there in LA and we just played for hours at the park. Like literally we played, ran around and then uh, what did we do? We went to go get ice cream. So 
Uh, I'm so happy that they remember me. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so go check out that interview this week. It's a pretty popular one, too. Uh, big shout outs on Patreon to Tim in LA, Tony and Maria in Texas, and Felix in Malaysia. Grateful for your support on Patreon, for believing and supporting this channel. If you want to support us too, go ahead, check out the Patreon link, Patreon link in the description. And if you're on SoundCloud, click the blue button on the homepage. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that you can support the Morning Star Drive at just three bucks a month. Way better than Netflix. <laughs> right? And at the moment, of course, like training videos, Bible studies, go check it out. And a lot of people are actually using those Bible studies to show their newcomers. So that's kind of cool too. Now, it doesn't mean they give them the account because, you know, there's a lot of stuff for Providence people only on there. But more than anything else, it's for, um, uh, there's a lot of stuff on there uh, that will help you guys out to, you know, to understand the word better. We have word studies every week, which are crazy good right now. Uh, the last one, last week's, oh, last week's was so good because on Monday we did the word study at night. And then on Friday, I took that and made it into an education on Friday. So I was, um, that's something you can get an idea of how to make a lecture through those different things. Right. And of course, 90% of the people on the site are supporting the channel just to support. They're not even looking at what's on the, on the site. They're just there to support. So all of that is purely up to you. A lot of people are doing it just to support the Morning Star Drive and Espresso with Sky. All right. So let's move on to some member music going on from around the world. Who is today's featured artist of the day? On this amazing Wednesday, we have Renee Lai from Taiwan. She has come out with three songs in the first month this year. So I'm super happy about that. And we're going to play one of the fast songs. It's a remix, remix of a song from Ah Lin. So we'll start off with that. And then we'll have M see one love from australia with the journey and then we'll end things off with pgy from the paper music associates in korea with dear god of the universe <laughs>
History, purpose ain't a mystery.
is PGY from PMA in Korea with Dear God of the Universe. Uh, before that was MC One Love from Australia with The Journey. And of course, the featured artist of the day was Renee Lai from Taiwan with an Ah Lin remix. All right. So uh, let's get into today's uh, news going on around the world. And of course, everyone knows three reasons why we listen to the news. Number one, as Sunseam says, through world events and world news, you can see what God is doing. Number two is we can see the condition of the world. And last but not least, uh, sometimes we hear some depressing or like horrifying things through the news. And realizing that if we're affected by this, how much more is God when that's his own creation doing it, right? So um, then we can look at the news and really comfort God in these things also, okay? So let's start off with the coronavirus updates for uh, today or what we missed over the weekend. Uh, globally, since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, there have been 411.6 million cases with over 5.83 million deaths. And that mortality rate has dropped 0.02% over the weekend to 1.41%. Top five countries going by daily death rates. Brazil on top. Surprisingly, Brazil's on top 892 deaths with 134,000 cases. U.S. is second with 873 deaths and 59,000 cases. Russia in third, 729 deaths. Uh, they have the most uh, infections with 203,000. Then India comes 
comes in fourth with 653 deaths and 44,000 cases. And then Mexico rounds up the top five with 564 deaths and 31,000 cases. And of course, you see that uh, both U.S. and Mexico are in the top five. Uh, Canada is like in the top 10. Oh, is it top 10? No, I think they're in the top 15 or top 20. And they have 68 deaths and 6,100 cases in a single day. All right, so let's get into the current news. What are the top three news? And of course, we're going to go back to the Russia-Ukraine tensions. So now, guess what the news over the weekend was? A dozen nations tell their citizens to leave the Ukraine. So more than a dozen countries have urged their citizens to leave Ukraine amid warnings from Western powers that an invasion by Russia could be imminent. The U.S., U.K., Germany are among those who told their nationals to leave. Now, Moscow has amassed an estimated 100,000 troops along Ukraine's border, but denies any intent to invade. In a phone call, U.S. President Joe Biden again warned Russian, Vladimir, Russian leader Vladimir Putin of the costs of any invasion. And for his part, Ukrainian President uh, Vol uh, Vladimir Zelensky said invasion warnings could stoke panic, which he called the best friend of our enemies. And the White House has warned that an invasion could happen at any time and could begin with bombing from the Air. Russia characterized such allegations as provocative speculation. Now, non-essential staff have been ordered to leave the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine's capital, Kiev, and consular services will be suspended from Sunday, although a small consular presence will remain in the western city of Lviv uh, to handle emergencies. Now, Canada is also moving its embassy staff to Lviv near the border with Poland, um, Canadian media reported and UK ambassador to Ukraine, Melinda Simmons, tweeted that she and a core team are staying in Kiev. Now, Russia itself is also making changes, saying it will optimize the staffing of its diplomats in Ukraine, citing possible acts of provocation by the Kiev regime or third countries. The U.S. has also pulled some 150 troops who were training Ukrainian soldiers out of the country, citing an abundance of caution, and Dutch airline KLM announced it would stop flying to Ukraine effective immediately, Dutch media said. Now, uh, Mr. Zelensky said that if Western powers had any firm evidence of an impending invasion, he had yet to see it. Many countries, including Australia, Italy, Israel, the Netherlands, and Japan, have told their citizens to leave the Ukraine. Some have also evacuated diplomatic staff and their families. Uh, in Kiev, several thousand people marched through the city on Saturday, chanting slogans pledging loyalty to Ukraine and resistance to any Russian invasion. The march was organized by a right-wing nationalist group called GONOR and anti-Zelensky far-right activist Sergei Stir uh, Sternenko. Uh, I believe that's right. Uh, but it attracted other people too. Now, tensions have steadily increased as Russia has continued to deploy troops along Ukraine's eastern border. Russian troops are also staging military exercises in Belarus to the north, while naval exercises in the Sea of Azov in the southeast have led to accusations that Russia is blocking Ukraine's access to the sea. Now, meanwhile, some 7,500 kilometers away on Russia's eastern side, the Russian Defense Ministry says it spotted a U.S. Navy submarine inside its territorial waters. Officials say the U.S. submarine was near the Kuril Islands and fail to surface when instructed. Now, the Mar uh, Marshal Shaposhnikov destroyer took unspecified appropriate, um, well, let's say unspecified uh, appropriate actions and the U.S. submarine left the area. The ministry said a U.S. defense official has been summoned by Moscow over the incident. However, U.S. officials later con contradicted their Russian counterparts' version of the event. So, um, we don't know what's happening. We don't know who's stoking the flames, if it's real or if it's not, but what we know is 12 countries have taken their, uh, what do you call it? 12 countries have taken their uh, diplomats or their nationals out of the country. So, that is... Uh, kind of news that something could be happening or it could just be uh, people stoking the flames. We're not sure. Uh, in second news, we're going to go over back to Canada with the truckers protest, right? The, the freedom convoy. So what happened was there was a police raid over the weekend uh, on the bridge blockade at Windsor, Ontario, uh, which failed, uh, failed to shut it down with protesters in Ottawa also digging in what will it take them to budge. So they arrived by the bus load, police in uh, balaclavas and carrying long guns ready to oust dozens of protesters blocking roads leading to Ambassador Bridge. There were pickups and SUVs festooned with Canadian flags, 
and anti-vaccination slogans and anti-Trudeau epithets, uh, as well as some heavy commercial trucks. About 100 vehicles have been parked along the roughly two-kilometer uh, road leading up to the bridge for almost a week. The Freedom Convoy, as it's been called, began as a protest against a mandate requiring truckers who cross the U.S.-Canada border to be vaccinated. But the group is not united by any one occupation. Rather, they share a distrust of vaccines, a concern for government overreach, and a general dislike of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. More than 12 hours after a court issued an injun injunction ordering the Windsor site to be cleared, the poli police moved in on Saturday morning. A number of vehicles agreed to leave immediately, although not without a loud honk or a shout of disapproval. More were ticketed and towed in the evening. But vehicles are no longer the problem, says uh, Jason Belair, Deputy Chief of Operations for the Windsor Police Service. Now, while, men, while many of the vehicles are now gone, 100 or so people remain blocking the road, a mix of evangelical Christians, anti-mask mums, uh, vaccine skeptics, and local residents who are tired of lockdowns and vaccine passports. And police have pushed them forward inch by inch down the empty road by uh, away from the bridge, but their gains are slow. Uh, the occupied roads have many extra points and are surrounded by residential streets and backyards, making it easy to walk in. Uh, people are coming and going freely, helping the protest grow. Now, while law enforcement has come prepared with armored vehicles and tactical gear, they seem hesitant to act aggressively. So far, they've made very few arrests. And uh, what we know now is uh, they have finally cleared up that bridge and uh, only on the Canadian side, so not on the American side. So we'll see what happens over there um, with uh, this bordering on the U.S. side too. You know, like, like we talked about last week, more than $323 million in goods cross that bridge every single day, which means that if it's for nearly a week, think about how much that's $323 million per week. No, per day, which means we're going every three days is like a billion dollars pretty much, right? So that's a lot of uh, money that's being lost there economically. So it is a big concern. And the question that people, you know, have to think about more than just are they disturbing people's livelihoods is what is the purpose? Like, I'll give you an example. When I think about this, if something is a good enough reason, uh, like, for instance, what about let, let's, let's say there's slander persecution against Providence. What, what would we do, Right. Or, you know, imagine there's like people are killing people in Providence. What would we do? And, you know, it wouldn't be, you know, there would be a lot of disruption everywhere. So you can imagine what happened in um, the first century of Christianity where they were killing Christians left and right, taking them to the Colosseum uh, or just killing them, just flat out killing them and persecuting, right? So imagine if, you know, the times have changed. Today, you know, in the past they had to run, but now, you know, because there is freedom, and freedom of speech, you are able to pro protest is a normal part of like Canada, North American culture. You can't protest, protest if you don't like something. So uh, it is the safest way to do it is to protest. And uh, have they been violent? And the answer is uh, not a lot. Right. So from uh, there, there is this one Canadian YouTuber that's out there. He's a lawyer. Uh, his name is Viva Frey. He goes out there live just to show people what is going on out there. And it is not violent. Uh, it's not really violent. It's just very loud, noisy, and of course, disruption of disruption of pub, you know of everyday life. Businesses can't open or whatever's happening in that in that way. So it's interesting. We'll see what happens. And, and uh, you know, I don't think you know when you look at what happened last year with like George Floyd. Uh, even that, like, think about it. If it's something good enough and big enough, like say racial discrimination, people are fine with it. The disruption, of course. It depends on how violent or, you know, if there's looting and robbing or whatever it is. That's something that we don't want, uh, but that is not happening in Canada. I don't know if can Canadians are capable of doing that. I don't know. It's weird. And, you know, in the news, they call them terrorists, but it's kind of like you watch the, the live feed over there. There's nothing like there's no, They're not terrorists. They're totally not terrorists. They're they're like totally named that way, both in uh, in America and Canada. Call them these domestic terrorists, but they're, you know, it's, it's crazy, but... Yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, last but not least in the news, we're going to go to COVID protests that are happening uh, in Paris. 
Hundreds have been fined and dozens arrested as a convoy enters Paris. Uh, police have intercepted hundreds of vehicles trying to enter Paris as part of a protest against France's coronavirus regulations. Tear gas was fired in the city as demonstrators defied an order banned, uh, banning the Freedom Convoy. Interior Minister Gerald Darmanin said more than 300 tickets had been handed out and 54 people arrested. Authorities have deployed more than 7,000 officers over the next three days in a bid to stop the demonstrators. Despite those efforts, some vehicles managed to arrive at the Arc de Triomphe in the city and uh, tear gas was fired at demonstrators on the nearby Champs-Élysées Avenue. The groups were inspired by the self-styled Canadian Freedom Convoy, which has disrupted trade on the U.S. border and occupied streets in Ottawa. Similar demonstrations have started to spread around the world. Austria and Belgium have banned such convoys from entering their capitals, with similar demonstrations also emerging in Australia, New Zealand, and the Netherlands. On Saturday, can you imagine that one thing that's happening in Canada is... Like, like, it's inspiring the world to do these uh, convoys and these protests, right? On Saturday, police in Paris said they had intercepted hundreds of vehicles heading into the city. Two were allegedly carrying knives, hammers, and petrol canisters, and five were allegedly carrying slingshots. A video posted online by a journalist and shared by the police showed officers... Uh, halting lines of vehicles on the city's Ring Road. Police close to the Arc de Triomphe uh, were seen diverting camper vans and other vehicles away from the area. Demonstrators who oppose France's COVID pass, which requires people to show proof of vaccination before entering public venues, want to gather and blockade the capital across the weekend, suggesting such scenes may be repeated on Sunday. Uh, convoys have organized online and appear to come from various political and ideological backgrounds, making it difficult to estimate how many vehicles might arrive in Paris each day. They have also drawn in other others angry at rising prices in France, and some plan to continue on to Brussels, home of many European Union institutions, for further demonstrations on Monday. Now, city officials there have also banned the planned demonstration. Uh, Prime Minister Jean Castex said on Friday that authorities would be very firm if the group tried to block the French capital. And Mr. Castex also objected to the demonstrators calling themselves a freedom convoy. And he said basically... Uh, the word freedom should not be associated with, vir uh, how do you pronounce this, virulent attacks against vaccinations, he said, because freedom is not contaminating others. So, yeah, it's quite crazy. And honestly, like I said, you can take any side you want, but the only way to get this done is not by you protesting. It's by you praying. That, like, that's the ultimate way. We can all have our different, we can have all of our disagreements. Uh, we can all disagree, agree to disagree and such, but ultimately as people of this history, the number one thing we need to do is uh, we really, really need to pray for the situations. Okay, so that's the top three news for today, which we will get into some sporting news. And of course, we're going to get into the Olympics. So, so far, the medal tracker, most golds goes to Norway with nine, Germany with eight gold medals, and the U.S. in third with six gold medals. Yes, Canada's all the way down at number 11 with only one gold medal. <sighs> we'll get a bunch of them when it comes to ice hockey. I hope so, right? Uh, men's giant slalom, the Swiss wins the gold medal. It is uh, Odermatt wins the gold medal for the Swiss. In men's biathlon, um, his name is Philon Maillet. Maillet? Maillet? And he's from France. Women's biathlon was from Norway. His name, uh, her name is Rosalind. Men's cross country, four by four by ten kilometers. Uh, Russia wins. Then it's Norway, and then France. In men's curling, it's still preliminaries, but Canada just beat the U.S. ten to five. There you go, right? Men's ice hockey, Canada beats China five to zero, and then the U.S. beats the Germans three to two. In women's short track speed skating, three thousand meter relay, Netherlands in first, South Korea second, and China third. Uh, men's short track five hundred meters uh, from Hungary, it's Liu Xiaoang. So China, you know, Chinese born. Or, yeah, Chinese, I guess, a Chinese skater, uh, Chinese descendant, right? And then Canada, Stephen Dubois, comes in bronze. That's his second medal for, uh, for short track speed skating. In women's short track 500 meters, the U.S. Aaron Jackson... USA's Aaron Jackson wins the gold medal for that. Uh, some other crazy news in Canada. We have uh, for tennis, Can Canada's Felix Auger Aliasim uh, wins his first ATP title and defeats Stefano Tsitsipas, uh, the Greek, uh, the Greek athlete, the Greek tennis player. And so that's kind of cool for Canada. His first ATP win uh, in NBA. Uh, big news is LeBron James passes Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for most combined points in the regular and postseason combined. Uh, he's over 40,000 points now. And uh, only three players in NBA history have more than 40,000 combined points of regular season and uh, playoffs. And that is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Carmelo, and now uh, James, uh, LeBron James. 
Oh, and over the weekend, there was also UFC 271. Uh, Israel Adesanya defeats Robert Whitaker uh, undisputed. What's that? What's that word? Uh, de- unanimous decision. Unanimous decision. He won all rounds, and that's the fourth defense of the middleweight title that he did. All right. So that is your news in sports. Uh, top three news, uh, world news, and of course, uh, coronavirus updates for today. All right. So that brings us into the golden time, a time of praise, worship, and thanksgiving. And of course, this week's message, great message. What's it about, guys? Uh, it's about remembering all the grace you received being saved from death, and this is a time for us to give thanks. So we're going to start off with the grace of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And then we'll have the Thanksgiving of love. Yes, we've got to love. We, if anything, that great message part we'll go into a little bit more is how do we pay back this grace? It is by loving at the level of brides. And then last but not least, we'll uh, break things down with Lord, I call upon your name. So as one body of the morning star drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity. <laughs> open up our eyes and to give thanks with every word we speak we all sing praise to god the one who made and formed our souls and spirits we all give thanks through songs of praise he has been the warm rays of the sun and he has been the fresh air that we breathe the Spirit's warm embrace And thus we reign of grace and down upon us God raise our spirits with His love I praise and thank You, Lord I sing to You with love My spirit's changed into a bride So, Lord, be glorified For me, You're always there My spirit's in Your care The stream of now overflows I thank you, I thank you Jehovah Lord of hosts I thank you, I thank you Mother of my spirit I thank you, I thank you Holy Son, Lord of love I thank you, I thank you Thank you my Lord I thank you, I thank you Jehovah Lord of hosts I thank you I thank you, Mother of my spirit. I thank you, I thank you, Holy Son, Lord of love. I thank you, I thank you, thank you, my Lord. Lord, you've helped us open up our eyes and to give thanks with every word we speak. We all sing praise to God, the one who made and formed our souls and spirits. We all give thanks through songs of praise. He has been the warm rays of the sun and he has been the fresh air that we breathe the spirit's warm embrace and the sweet rain of grace sent down upon us god raise our spirits with his love i praise and thank you lord i sing to you with love my spirit's change into a bride so lord be glorified for me you're always there my spirit's in your care Stream of thanks and grace now overflows. I thank you, I thank you, Jehovah, Lord of hosts. I thank you, I thank you, Mother of my spirit. I thank you, I thank you, Holy Son, Lord of love. I thank you, I thank you, thank you, my Lord. Through you, Lord, I have a brand new life. Now I can live as your beloved bride. I'll only love you, Lord, for you have taught me about the life of heaven. My spirit will rejoice and sing. I praise and thank you, Lord. I sing to you with love. My spirit's changed into a bride, so Lord be glorified. For me, you're always there. My spirit's in your care. The stream of thanks and grace now overflows. I praise and thank you, Lord. I sing to you with love My spirit's changed into a bride So Lord be glorified For me you're always there My spirit's in your care The stream of thanks and grace now overflows I praise and thank you Lord I sing to you with love My spirit
spirits changed into a bride, so Lord be glorified. For me, you're always there, my spirit's in your care. This stream of thanks and grace now overflows.
confess to you all or not At this moment I wish to be reborn With all my heart I call and call All of a sudden I can't feel The fire of his love come closer to me As the warmth of his love continuously seeps into my soul Hot tears begin to stream down from my eyes Cause I feel my Lord has come I feel him next to me The glowing warmth of his love is healing wonderful set of praise and worship today uh, on this wonderful Valentine's Day. Lord, I call upon your name at Thanksgiving of love and of course the grace of Thanksgiving. All right, so let's get into the word study for today. Uh, This week's message, realize the grace of the Trinity who saved you from death and live loving them. So great message this week. And man, how many stories did Sunstein tell? You can, you know that he like basically said exactly, you know, what he said about his experience of how he received the message, it's perfect, right? How did he get, how did he get that message? And basically it was the Holy Spirit. He was praying at 1 p.m., right? If, if, we, if I remember this correctly, and he was doing his regular topics of prayer. And then of course he prayed to the Holy Spirit that he wanted to pray something fitting, uh, that fit God's shim junk, his heart, right? And the Holy Spirit basically told him, uh, from the past until now, God has saved you from all kinds of death, all kinds of struggling, so don't forget and live giving thanks. So after receiving this from the Holy Spirit, 
basically straight up went into praying. He said that he's going to pray about it like satisfactorily or sufficiently, something along that line, which means that, but you could tell by the message, he took it to heart and he's thinking about everything, right? And this is why I really want for the Thursday podcast, if you guys have anything, a story of God saving you from death, would love to hear it. Would love, uh, go ahead. You can write it in, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you can write it as a text form to me uh, over email or you can just, you know, you can record it yourself. But I would love to hear how God has, um, those how God has saved you from death. So he prayed about this for a long time, counted all the times he was saved. He asked God how many times, 60 plus times. And that doesn't even include the times where he just prevented him from going into position of death, right? So when I was looking at this, I was like, oh, that's so deep. Uh, like the way he does it, Holy Spirit says one thing and he's off to the races. Meaning, he is doing exactly what the Holy Spirit wants, thinking about every single time he's almost died. Right? Every single time. Uh, you know, we're not going to talk about like, I think he did like 24 or 25 different stories. Right? There were like hundred, like there's like 25 different stories. And then you know that he prepared so much for this because he's got like a picture for almost every single incident he's talking about. Right, that first story of being on the beach in Vietnam, eighty soldiers coming, and how did he defeat the situation through prayer? Like you know, by himself, how could he hold off eighty soldiers? He probably wouldn't even enough bullets for himself. So he made it so no one would die, right? And uh, I like the message. The message there was, there is a way to save everyone, right? Saving the enemy is also peace. So we have to think about this too. Saving the enemy is also peace, right? And I, I think that's something that we should really uh, consider. Are, are, we, are we just trying to win or are we even trying to uh, save the enemy? So as Sunseem said, saving the enemy, excuse me, um, I, was, I was wiping my nose, uh, saving the enemy is also peace. Uh, the Vietnam story of, of course we know the story of uh, when God told Sunseem to love when the enemy is pointing his gun at him. Uh, and, uh, you know, we always forget that even when he went to go save this person, he could have died again because that guy was sitting on a grenade, right? So they would have both died anyways, right? Um, I, this is the one I've heard before too. Of course, we, well, many of these songs, many of these stories we heard, especially these Vietnam stories, when you read the book also, uh, bathing in, when he went to, he was sweating hot so much that him and a, another soldier went to bathe in this water and then he hears someone loading a gun, and it was the enemy. And he said that eventually there was like 16 soldiers that passed by, but their guns didn't fire. And uh, what's what's so sad is you actually had one of the elders go to Vietnam to meet this like the people who who uh, actually can testify about it. But when they he went back to uh, testify to to record the the testimony. Basically, uh, the person had already died. So that's really a shame that uh, we couldn't get that on live testimony from these people in the Vietnam War. Uh, man, I didn't know about this one when he went into the cave. And then all of a sudden you see him and a, an enemy pointing a gun at each other. And he said that God made the enemy so scared that he didn't fire. And instead he captured him. Which, ugh, can you imagine that? You're in a cave scared for your life and you see the enemy come in and you don't shoot. Like, that's like kill or be killed. And that enemy didn't shoot. That's like his life. So I, I looked at that as like, wow. That's a story. I, I, don't, I don't remember ever hearing that one. And another one where he found, uh, found over 800 guns. Was it like 840? How many stories are there here? Like, we know the one about the, the bomb, like the mortar being fired and then it uh, destroys the barracks where he was supposed to be sleeping in, right? And that was a, that was a pretty crazy one too. And uh, it was twice. He got saved twice, right? Remember? Because one time was he was being saved because, what was the first time? The first time he was being saved, oh yeah, because his, uh, his superior was drunk and wanted him to, uh, uh, wanted him to, uh, whatchamacallit, he was drunk and wanted him to take his shift for the lookout. And then, you know, they kind of got into a fight, like an argument, and then they both left together. And then that barracks got destroyed. They fell to the ground and they moved again. And then that part got, that's crazy, don't you think? Man, I thought that was, a, that was just incredible. 
Or what about that? T- oh, man, I don't, I don't think I remember hearing the story where he went to go plant, plant like, well, it's been a long time. I've heard a lot of these uh, these Vietnam stories, but he went to plant a claymore, like a mine, a ground mine, right? And then as he's going to, he's going to uh, plant it, his own, his own soldiers on his, from Korea are shooting at him and throwing in grenades. He's like, no, it's me. Like, that's so crazy, right? And he says, you know, you don't shoot at your own side. Uh, because of misunderstanding, and I think that's that's quite interesting because um, it's kind of like when it comes to like say loyalty of friendship and stuff. Sometimes we'll give up our loyalty because it has to do with our do or die kind of thing. Like oh, I'll get in trouble, but is that really worth the loyalty? I, I don't think it's loyalty is very very hard to find. So don't shoot at your own side for misunderstanding. Misunderstanding is come and go. Don't betray because of a misunderstanding. If if anything else. Man, that story when Sun was oh, there's so many stories. I remember the one when he you know he talks about when he's when he was sick from birth and he was about to die, but he's opened his eyes. I remember that one. The one what he was tied to a tree while he was a baby. My mo- while his mom was tending to the field, and there was like a venomous snake coming. Like, I remember those ones. But what about this one when he was on the eleven years old, uh, climbing the persimmon tree to get a persimmon fruit, and then the branch broke and he landed on his chest he said and he says his heart stopped and someone had to revive him which is which is i didn't know that one yeah there's a lot of stuff right there's a lot of stuff and then going into the uh man what about the, just i'm not going to say every single one but what about all those times he could have got crushed by a rock like he felt like someone's pushing him or he gets out of the situation where the cave collapses like that's incredible there are so many things here where he could have died. So many things. Like, ugh, what about when he's 70 days of fasting and under 100 pounds? That is crazy. Even for his size, under 100 pounds is not easy. Like, the lowest I've been is like 167. You know, since I was like 17, 18. I, I don't think I've ever been, since 17, I've never been under uh, 167. But he, you know, but I'm a lot bigger than him though. Something That's true. But yeah, uh, man, so many incidents in Womindong could have died. Many people could have died. <sighs> yeah, I, I really, really feel this is the week um, that we should kind of sit down and pray and just tell God and ask God to remind us of all those times we could have died, right? All those times we could have, you know, been in danger. And it's what Sunseem said too is it's not just the times he saved you from death, but what about the times he prevented you from even going? Right? And I was like, man, that brought brought up that when he said that, that brought up one of these stories I'll tell you guys about tomorrow where I could have, you know, got into an accident and died, like when I was in Germany at that time. But it, wow. Yeah. I'm I'm you know what about that time? <laughs> the funny one was that newcomer that's just complaining to him. <laughs> and when he finally comes down, she's like, no, that's enough. Just seeing you was enough. And he, she was like, kept telling him, come down from the rocks, come down from that mission masterpiece when he could have got crushed during that time. I thought that was kind of crazy too because it shows that we really don't know, right? We really, really have no idea like uh, how, how much we could, you know, that we would complain in that situation. We would. We ourselves would complain in that situation, but we realize like, wow, that is so crazy. Uh, we would have, we could have died, but instead we complain because we think it's not going our way. So even for that, I was like, that is so incredible. We, you know, just like Sunsea's writing a book, I think we need to write books too, or at least leave testimonies, like audio testimonies of how many times God has saved us. But the big thing that I thought was so incredible was how can you pay back all this grace? What can I do to pay back all this grace? And what did, uh, what did, what did God say? You cannot repay back all this grace with the love at the level of children. You must love at the level of a bride. And that was a thing that was like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Isn't that crazy? That, that is incredible. We have the way to save people. Right? To save, uh, I mean, not save, to repay back God for what He has done. And what is it? We repay God back through loving Him as a bride every day. 
talking to him, conversing with him, seeing how he's doing, you know, like, uh, comforting him when, when there's like terrible things out there. I think that w- that is the ultimate thing that we have to think about is in the end, how do you uh, how do you save? In the end, in uh, not save, sorry. I keep saying save, but how do we repay back? There is so much, but to repay back, all we need to do is love. And this holds true even in our lives where if you love someone so much and they love you back, It's so easy to forgive them. It is so easy to not even think of them in a calculating way, but you're just so happy that they're there with you right now. And I I really, really hope that all of us too uh, can think about all the times God has saved us. This this is realize, right? This is a thing that um, the Lord wants from us this week. Realize about this. And when we realize about this properly and deeply, this is when we're going to give a life of thanks and love to the Holy Trinity. And we will repay back all that love, not with money, not with an action, but through love, right? The most important, like this is something that came up in last week's um, Friday, see you, see you Saturday, if you haven't seen it on Patreon. The key point was um, when Sunseep says to maintain and manage your faith, is not about maintaining the action of going to church every Sunday. It's maintaining that first love, maintaining the mentality of first love, which means when you have that first love, you just want to be better to that person. You want to treat them well. You want to forgive them. You want to give them things more and more because that's first love mentality. If you just maintain actions, what happens is, Actions is like, well, I go to church every Sunday, but I don't feel God. I go to pray on every day, but I don't feel God. That's the problem. We're maintaining and we're we're uh, managing actions more than uh, actually the love, that mentality of first love, right? So I, I hope it's something that all of us can think about even more deeply each and every time. But uh, yeah, this great message, I think it's more for us to reflect upon our lives. What has God, how has God saved us? How has God saved our the people we love? Just think about these things or even sometimes where God has prevented you from going to a place where you could have gotten hurt, okay? So uh, that is the word study for today. Hope it's something that you guys can think about a lot too, uh, which means uh, we're going to get into our uh, a song of choice for today, okay? So today's song of choice, of course, every single Mondays we go into, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we go, we do like Philippine songs, right? Songs from the Philippines because I love Philippine singers, right? And they are just so amazing. So uh, we're going to, what song are we going to do today? I completely forgot. Uh, it's called, I, I can't pronounce this properly. So all you uh, Filipinos out there can uh, help me out with this. I think it's called Katang Isip. Okay, from Ben and Ben. This is a Filipino group called Ben and Ben. The song is called Katang Isip or Katang Isip. I'm not sure what it is, but Filipinos out there, make sure that you translate for that uh, that for me because I have no idea what it means or what the song's about. Ben and Ben with Katang Isip. Hope you guys really enjoy this song of choice for today.
have it that is Ben and Ben that's a group from the Philippines that song is called Katang Isip so once again Filipino listeners out there please tell me what that actually means I would love to know what that song is about it's a beautiful song and sang wonderfully as well all right so that is that is a song of choice for today hope you guys really enjoyed that which leads us into the last section on this wonderful Monday on the 500th episode Valentine's Day special uh today uh, we have two G Talks with Eddie Kwan uh, from San Francisco. Hope you guys really enjoy this. Of course, you have you can comment on uh, Eddie and also you can uh, leave a message on his email, which will be in the description below. All right, everyone, please welcome Eddie Kwan with two G Talks. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another segment of 2G Talks. I'm so happy to be here, and I love reading everyone's comments. It seems like many people, uh, you know, across the the different countries that listen to the MSD 117.8, uh, they they especially resonated with the personality trait one, and I'm I'm so glad that everyone shared about the different personalities too, um, and because you know it it's a part of us that you know might not seem super malleable at times but you know whether it's something that we hope to change or if it's something that we want to keep uh, the idea that we really aspire to do is to use it to our strengths right because there's strengths to everything uh, and for me i think you know as i started getting older and started knowing and learning a little bit more about the bible that really made me think about you know in isaiah right when he talks about god's holy mountain right with all of these different animals um that have all of these you know uh, different qualities that you wouldn't think of living together but really within god's history Right when we're united for that singular will, that's the only time and place, really, 
that people of all of these different sort of characteristics can come together and live uh, just as all of the animals, you know, in that um, parable uh, did. And so, yeah, for everyone to, <laughs> whether or not you like your personality or not, I think really the, the idea that, that I really aspire for, that I desire in Providence is for people to be able to work together in this way. Because, you know, I, you know, one of the biggest things I've seen in, you know, 24, almost 25 years of living in Providence and growing up is that, wow, the word that we have is great and it's tremendous uh, and it's truth. And, you know, the one of the things I, I, I really want to work on is being able to ju- deliver the truth well, right, in a way that really resonates with people. Uh, but then I, the, one of the things I, I really felt this week is that, um, and, you know, it's just this, this is just so prevalent in last week's message, too, right, when we saw the how history has been built and all the different things that Sun Zim has had to go through. Uh, we think about, you know, it's not just about words. Right? Because people can say lofty things like all across the world. But of course, the words that you know we deliver here have power. But we recognize the power because we've seen what it's like to put it in, into practice. Right? And so as Sun Zeng Yim was talking about you know, how he de- de- uh, developed War Myung Dong. Uh, you know, for me, because I was born in 97 um, and I was in Korea at the time. Right. It was something that, you know, as a baby, you're like peripherally aware of. And I definitely went to Wormyeongdong uh, when I lived in Korea until about like 2003. Um, but un- until this last week, right, when we actually saw each step of the process, right, of all the times they had to build it of what it looked like every time, of what the members were thinking every time, and what something you said at every time, and what happened at every time it collapsed. Right, That was just such a, a, an in-your-face um, representation of, of how that happened, about you know what it's like to actually put into practice, right? The realizations came after, or you know, it might have come in tandem, but it only strikes you, right? Knowledge that's just skin deep doesn't help anyone, but we in Providence are people who've seen like what it's like to put the word into practice and what the the ultimate purpose that God had wants to fulfill can be like if we, you know, do our responsibility, right? And work together with God. And I think we really needed this message last week because for me, uh, one of the things that I really want to do here in San Francisco and, you know, with my current mission of taking care of the SS uh, is I really want to raise them well, right? And so when we have these sort of basic fundamental principles, for S says there's something that actually Pastor Joan told us in, in that, you know, you can't just give the basics, right? Because for them, they're just so lost and they're trying to, to find their way through life. And so they actually need clearer direction than, you know, than other people would. And I really resonated with that because I think I needed the same thing when I was growing up. And, and but, you know, I, I, this is kind of to do with being an ENFP in some regards, too. But I think just always, as long as I've known myself, um, I really hated um, delivering <laughs> what might be seen as bad news to people or um, or of being harsh on people. But then at the same time, while growing up in Providence, I realized that there are times when discipline is really important. Right. There is I was reading, you know, through Hebrews the other day, and this was so powerful because it says, you know, even our physical fathers discipline us at times and we actually respect them for it. Right? And so how much more with God? Right. Because for our human fathers, they discipline us according to what they know to be good. Right. But God, he does it so that we will be blameless and righteous. Right. And, you know, and God's standard is obviously much higher because he's omnipotent and omniscient. Our human fathers, you know, their knowledge only goes to a certain point. But for him, his knowledge is boundless and endless. Right. And, you know, I've seen this. Right. And, you know, for anyone who's been disciplined while growing up, we see right at first, even the scriptures, it says when you when you are disciplined, it hurts. Right. It doesn't feel good. Right. And you don't enjoy it. But later the fruits that it bears is righteousness, right? And, and and it's so tremendous what you get from, from being disciplined to some degree too. So when I tell SS these truths or when I talk about the word, I don't want it to just go to a skin deep or a, a basic level because I don't think that that's what they need. Because when I was growing up, I was like, that's not what I need, right? And so I wanted to have real conversation with people and I wanted, you know, clear understanding of how to, how I should navigate around things. Because I can think all on my own, you know, however I want to. But, you know, when, 
when someone tells you something very clearly and it strikes you, those are the things that help you give direction in life. And I see that all across the world that uh, many SS, not, not SS just in Providence, but just these kids who are in their teenagers, uh, they're not really getting that as we are making our way into 2022. But yes, yeah, so tying that back, I think that's why this message is so important because Han Xingyi was just so, talking so clearly about the past, right? We, we, we talked a lot about War Myung-dong today and, you know, right before this, we had a word study today and we were talking about all the lessons that we gleaned uh, from that video of showing how War Myung-dong was developed too. But there was also another striking part about what Han Xingyi said um, on Wednesday and he was talking about when he went to Vietnam. Right? And so we've heard the story about him loving his enemies many times. And I think that's a great story. But, you know, it was, it was the first time he talked about it like this. And he was like saying in the Wednesday message through the head leaders. Um, you know, even for Sun Sing too, would it have been easy for him to love his enemies? Right. As you're going into war. Right. And something was like conscripted into the war. And of course. Right. Like he he went because God was sending him. But he was still in anguish. Right. Like he, he had his mother pray for him and he went through all of these struggles. And it war is such a terrifying place. I think we're so distant from it that, you know, uh, we we don't feel the, the brevity and the 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 magnitude of just how how much fear that you would go through in this period when you could really lose your life at the hands of the enemy and so like he he said it was struggle like he had to struggle to get there and i think that was such a real moment because for me like i needed to hear that and i recognize that ss need to hear that everyone needs to hear that too right that you have to work to get to this level Right, so for me, as I mentioned, I, I, I don't like, you know, saying things that maybe discipline others or are hard on other people, but I am seeing the value of this, right, because I think this is the same, same thing with, with maybe younger parents nowadays too, right, so because, you know, it, it's not just to do with Providence, but all across the world, especially in these Asian countries in the last few generations, uh, we went through periods of poverty, Right? And so our parents, like, oftentimes they wanted to give us a better life and they want to provide for us things that they never had. And they also want to ensure that, you know, we can live, you know, a, a more affluent life than they did. But on this note, too, right, I was really thinking about, you know, my past. Right. And so it was interesting because, you know, I heard a, a quote this week from Bruce Lee and I've heard this quote before, but I think it ties into this idea really well. And one of the things that Bruce Lee, you know, told people was to um he said don't just give your kids everything that you didn't have but teach them all of the things that you didn't know and i think that was such a powerful point because even though even though for me i don't like i don't like you know being hard on people or disciplining them or or teaching them hard things I saw the magnitude of this because even for me too, right? Like my parents are always talking about how like, oh yeah, they want to, you know, acquire property and do all these things for us because we went through a lot of difficulties while growing up in America. And, you know, I, I want those things too, of course, right? You know, I want a nice house, right? Fulfill that American dream, whatnot and everything. But when I really live, reflect back on my life, it wasn't those things that inspired me. And, I, and I'm, I know I've talked about this on this channel before, but I think this is important. I think this ties directly into this identity of, of the second generation, too. Uh, but it was really the lessons that, you know, my parents taught me while, you know, I was growing up. That those things are the things that are so valuable that I wouldn't trade for the world. Um, like, you know, um, uh, recently, this last week, actually, my brother applied for his U.S. citizenship. And as I mentioned, um, you know, I'm, I'm 24, 25 now, and he's about to turn 24 this year. And we've lived in America about 18, 19 years or so. So, you know, that's quite a lengthy process to acquire citizenship. And, you know, um, I, I, actually for me, I didn't receive my green card or my permanent uh, alien residentship here in America until my senior, no, until... To my the 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 summer of my junior year of high school, and that was such a pivotal moment in our family because if I hadn't acquired it then, then I wouldn't be able to apply to college here, and I would have had to go back to Korea. And you know, at the moment it didn't hit me, but when I really think about it, just how tremendous that is, because I didn't speak a lick of Korean at that point, right? And all of my direct family members here. So if I had to go to Korea, what would life have been like for me if I had to go back? Right, so I really thank God for giving me the opportunity to to be here 
and to re- witness that blessing. But when I think about all the things that my parents went through, right, I can see why they want to give me a better life. But, you know, when I watched them growing up, right, one of the conditions that my, my father had to set when we moved to America was he had to go work at a poultry farm, right, out in Florida. Right, that was one of the conditions to receive our green card. And so there were a couple of years where he lived apart from us, right? We're here in San Francisco and Florida's all the way on the other side of the country. And so for about two years, we didn't see him, right? And this was before, you know, like FaceTime or FaceTalk was a thing, right? We had, you know, we had phones, but, you know, and this is before my brother and I had phones. So it was just my mom. So we barely spoke to him during that duration, right? It was, diff- it was a difficult time for our family. Uh, But in that whole time, you know, I never once thought that my parents were going through any sort of hardship, right? Because my mom, right, she was the one that primarily took care of us for that two-year period and even afterwards too. And in that whole time, I never once saw her give up, right? In that whole time, and it's not just that. It's not just that she was caring for us too, but I saw all of the tremendous thing that she was doing for our church members too and for the people that we knew. Right, so even though our financial situation and just our overall situation wasn't the greatest, she always cared for other people, right? And she was always making sure that people on their birthdays were, you know, that she could prepare whatever she can get her hands on to give it to them. And she was always inviting people over to our house to eat together with us. She would teach members Korean for those who were interested. And my mom is not shy to give her uh, her input or her advice to other people. And so she was, you know, a, a source of strength for a lot of people at the the church too and so for me greater than those things that i could gain physically of course physical things are nice too but the lessons that i learned from watching you know my parents and not just my parents but everyone in providence run together in this way uh, i saw i saw the promise of god and i saw the promise of this mountain i saw how each of these pieces And how all of providence can work together, even with all of our different personalities, to achieve this great heaven. So, of course, there are times when it's difficult. And, of course, there are times when we don't live according to that promise. And, of course, there are times where we have conflicts together. But I saw, I saw when we made the environment what heaven could be. And so, I really hope that for all of us across the world, as this platform becomes even more international. And as, you know, this uh, podcast has greater reach too. Not just in terms of the, the, the listeners now but for the next thousand years i really hope that we can continue to fine-tune ourselves and make ourselves in this way continue to grow the platform too so that this becomes even better and better and that for everyone across the world that in our own individual ways that we'll take action so that all together as the pieces fit together that we'll be able to make an even greater history of god when we run not just by ourselves but united all together with everyone but thank you for joining me for the segment of 2g talks i really enjoyed this message today thank you pastor sky for <laughs> for for not just providing me with this platform but for coaching me through a lot of different things and even for giving me insight on what to talk about today i really want to grow 2g talks too and make it even better, right? And make an even uh, an outward uh, facing platform to evangelize newcomers as well. So uh, please continue to give your feedback, write stuff down in the comments or shoot me an email. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next week's episode of 2G Talks. And there you have it. That is 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan. Hope you guys really enjoyed this. He is doing a wonderful, masterful job with this series uh, segment. And hope you guys, uh, if you have any comments, like I said, drop your comments below for Eddie. And if you want to, you know, uh, ask him something a little bit more personal about SS or whatever it is that he's talking about, go ahead and drop him a line on his email, which is right below in the description. All right. So that is the end of today's podcast. It's Monday podcast. Hope you guys really, really enjoyed this time as I have. Everyone has have amazing and awesome Monday, awesome Valentine's Day together with the Lord. And yes, once again, this is the 500th episode of the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can
to stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know